All right, last problem. Uh, you're almost there, right? Problem number six. Uh, I think this is going to be a good, straightforward problem. You know it's conservation of energy, but even if you didn't know, you know it's going to be asking about things like um, velocity. It's going to be changing in height, springs, things like that. All right, so <clears throat> we've got a four-foot slender bar, weighs 40 pounds, center of mass at B. It's released from rest and position for which theta is virtually zero. Now, these problems, it's sometimes it's hard to tell where it starts and where it ends. Uh, theta right here is this angle right here. Uh, and so it virtually basically starts right here at a vertical position. Now make sure you can visualize where it starts and where it ends. Uh, point B has to confine to move along a smooth vertical uh, guide. Point A moves along this guide. Uh, determine, okay, so <clears throat> first we're, we're not going to determine the angular velocity at theta is equal to z theta is equal to 30. Uh, we're just only going to do one of these. We're going to find the velocity that when B strikes the horizontal surf surface. Uh, when B gets all the way down to here. So here is its final position. Its final position is going to be down here. Right here is its final position. All right, initial position is that pink vertical position. Final position is this, at the very bottom, blue um, kind of horizontal position. Okay, conservation of energy. Potential plus kinetic plus non-conserved work equals potential plus kinetic. And now that we have rigid bodies, uh, each of these terms could have two different terms. Right, the potential energy due to gravity, the potential energy in a spring. The linear ro uh, kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. The non-conserved work done by force and the non-conserved work done by a moment. And here is the gravity spring linear rotational final. Right, These two are initial. These two are final. The initial energy plus any non-conserved work uh, leads to the final energy. Okay, and I kind of like to write out this whole equation, but you might not like to do that. Um, so I'm going to say the MGH plus 1 half kx squared plus 1 half <clears throat> mv squared plus 1 half i omega squared plus fd plus m theta equals all of the final MGH, the final 1 half kx squared, the final 1 half mv squared and 1 half i omega squared. Then I remind myself... This is the height of point G, the velocity of point G, the I of point G. The height of point G, the velocity of point G, the I of point G. All right, but a lot of things will go to zero. If there was no spring, then we wouldn't have to worry about it. I think we do have a spring here, right? We do have a spring here that might be getting compressed. Um, it started from rest. It started from rest. So both the 1 half mv squared and 1 half i omega squared initially are zero. Are there any external forces or external moments, moments that are drawn on there, forces that are drawn on there, or a rope, a cable that is acting a certain distance? No, we don't have that right here. Okay, so, t -t 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 -t. all right, here we go. So let's start thinking about these MGH, 1FK. Let's think about these terms right here. MGH, when it is at its, its, its initial point, where is point G? Point G is uh, 24 inches from, I think I want to call this zero, right? Does that make sense? Let me call this zero. It ends at a height of zero. It starts at a height of 24 inches. I could keep inches, but then everything would need to be in inches. And a few things are in inches. Maybe I should choose inches. If I choose inches, then my gravity would have to be in inches, uh, not feet. Uh, I'm going to choose feet mainly because I'm, I'm probably going to choose 32.2 feet per second squared. I'm going to use it eventually, maybe. We'll see where we're going to use it. Um, and so, in, in general, for my um, <clears throat> English units, I'm, I'm going to choose feet. So, anyway, the two feet, right? Not too bad, right here. All right, so the mg, I could take this 40 and divided by 32.2, but then I'm also going to multiply by 32.2 right after it. mg is the weight, right? Weight is mg. So this is 40 
let me keep up with my units here, times two feet. That's the MGH right there. Plus one half K of, well, oh, sorry. Well, first of all, uh, what is the X? What is the amount of stretch? Um, Y'all can probably see your figure better than I wrote over this. This spring is not attached. This spring is just initially, it's just laying there, right? That spring has no stretch or compression initially. Is that it on the left-hand side of my equation? Yeah, yeah. I mean, all of the energy is just in the potential energy due to the height of that <clears throat> slender rod standing up, you know, on its on its edge. Okay, now the final MGH, it's zero down here at the bottom. All right, but now this spring is being uh, compressed, I, I think, a, a little bit, right? This spring is being compressed. All right, the K, all right, one half K, the K is 30 pounds per inch, but I, I really want feet. I'm going to multiply it times 12, all right, 360 pounds per foot foot uh, because I'm about to multiply it times an X. How many feet is this being compressed? Originally, this spring was 18 inches from the wall. It's going to end up, if this goes down here, it's going to end up 24 from the wall. It is getting compressed 6 inches or half a foot. And don't forget to square, you know, one half kx squared. Forgetting to square is a very common mistake for some of these v squareds, x squareds, omega squareds. Okay, so that's one half kx squared. That's the final, when it's in its final position, it is being compressed six inches. So 0.5 feet. All right, plus one half m, all right, m is 40 over 32.2. That right there is the reason I want everything in feet uh, because I don't want to worry about my slugs or, or changing this 32 point. If I, I could change that 32.2 to inches per second squared, but I'm going to get leave it as feet per second squared. And so my VG is going to be feet per second. Uh, and I don't know V right now. All right. Plus one half the eye of a slender rod, one twelfth. M, all right, so here's another M, 32.2, 1 twelfth M L squared. That whole length, the total length right there, 4 feet. Don't forget this omega squared. And is the velocity of G related to the velocity of omega? VG equals R omega. What is R? R is the distance from the center of rotation. Where's the center of rotation? Oh, I don't have one. I don't have a good fixed center of rotation. So where is the instantaneous center? This is going down. This is going over. So I draw. <clears throat> I draw my dotted lines, and right here at the edge of this, where point A is, right here. Here's the instantaneous center. This is. <clears throat> point B is 24 inches or 2 feet away. So I'm going to plug in 2 omega right there. Plug in 2 omega, square both the 2 and the omega. And then I only have one unknown omega that I can solve for. 3.25 radians per second. Just radians per second, right? Yeah. And... <clears throat> If I want to know the velocity, okay, actually, yeah, I did ask for the velocity. So if I want to know the velocity, the velocity would be 6.5 radians per second. 6.5 radians per second. So take a step back and look at what we did. We knew it was conservation of energy. We visualized where it started and where it ended. And then I, I wrote the whole equation, although a lot of these go to zero. There's no forces or moments it starts from rest, um, it ends at a zero height, it starts with no spring compressed or stretched, uh, and then I just had to evaluate these four terms right there. Just carefully, you know, think about those 
terms uh, so that I could solve. Careful with the units. I like to keep everything in feet because that's feet per second squared right here. Um, if I wanted everything in inches, then I would need to change that 32.2 .2 to inches per second squared. There's not, not too bad. All right.